So what I'm going to now show you is how I would go about configuring a compressor. So I'm in Logic Pro and I am using the Studio FET compressor and it comes with Logic Pro. I'm using an FET because it's a transistor compressor and it's got a very fast attack time. And that's what I want because I've got a kick drum sample. So I want a nice fast attack. So the way I would set a compressor is, and you can use this for any type of audio, and it's a really good starting point, is this. I'm going to set the attack all the way slow. I'm going to set the release all the way fast. Now, if you're using Logic and this particular compressor, make sure auto release is off and auto gain is off as well. I'm going to pump the ratio all the way up, and I'm going to bring the threshold all the way down. Okay, so if I play the audio, bring down the compressor. So the threshold set at minus 50, and I've got gain reduction of about about seven, minus well, 7 dB. It's minus, minus 7 dB. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push the makeup gain so it's nice and audible. Yeah, I don't want it to distort. So that's how. Those are my initial settings. Obviously, that is not going to be the final thing. So with this particular one here, I don't want the attack to squash the transient. So I don't want a fast attack time. I want that hit of the kick drum to come through. So the way I do this is like this. I'm going to play the track, or rather play the drum. And I'm going to slowly bring in the attack to make it faster. And as soon as it starts to dull the sound of the kick drum, I'm going to stop. So that's probably overdone it, but you can hear it's dulled the kick drum. So I'm going to dial it back a bit. Okay, so that's my attack. So get it to the point whereby it is dulling the sound and then just pull it back a bit. And that's letting that transient through. So I'm going to do something similar with the release. So I've got the release set as super fast, well, all the way fast, super fast. And I'm going to slowly increase the release until it does the same again. So the sound is dull. There we go. And bring it back. So it's a pretty fast release, to be honest. And I'll stop it there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the ratio, and I'm going to start here with 4 to 1. And obviously, you can play around with this depending on what uh, sound you want to get from this ultimately. Are you just aiming for a nice smooth compression, or are you trying to catch peaks? So then I'm going to start it at 4 to 1. Let's play that. And then I'm going to bring down the gain. Let's put that at 0 for now. And then the threshold, I'm going to go for about, let's go about minus 25. I've got about 3 dB of gain reduction. And then use the gain to make up for the reduction. Okay, and that is how I would initially set a compressor. So that's a really, really good starting point. And then you can go from there and do what you need to do. So let's just play it without the compressor. Now with. So hopefully you can hear the difference there. With that particular sample, the dynamic range isn't that varied, to be honest. And I could have used a better uh, better example. But in this instance, what I wanted to get across was how you could initially set up a compressor, because sometimes it can be quite difficult to know where to start. So use that as a starting point for your mixing. What you could also consider is this. When you're using a compressor with regards to your threshold and the ratio, the lower the threshold, try and have a lower ratio, OK? With a higher threshold, you can then have a higher ratio, with the idea being that a higher threshold you can use to catch peaks, okay? Catch those wild transients, and you can have a higher ratio to control those. Then with the lower ratio and the lower threshold, you can use that to just smooth out your mix if you're using it on your mix bus or on the individual audio. So another really good tip for you there.